your boy Tanek 127 With me I have my buddy, partner, all out awesome guy and YouTuber ICG Soul. What's going on guys? And um, I've been warning you guys for a long time that this video was coming. And right now, today, is the fucking day. And what I want to talk about, live commentary by the way, is why first person shooters of these past two generations have completely sucked dick. I'm not going to say all of them, I'm just going to say about 90%, which I can fairly say a good majority of the gaming community will agree with. Um, and this isn't even, you know, just like a bash towards Call of Duty. I'm talking about all shooters. And, um, it's just the fact that they really haven't been the same at all since, um, so what would you say this whole, uh, kill streak dick suckery thing started? What would you say so about? Um, gosh, it's, it's hard. Um, <laughs> as far as like kill streak, kill streak, because I know a respectable shooter that had kill streaks was Medal of Honor. The yeah, first one. yeah. Those kill streaks were realistic. That's yeah. fine. Uh, but I want to say it was around the dawn of the first Black Ops. <laughs> okay. More towards Modern Warfare 2 ish with the whole nukes and versions. And stuff. Yeah. And, okay, yeah, I can agree with that. And in case you guys are wondering, the reason I picked Battlefront mainly to um, do this commentary with is because um, Battlefront is the first shooter in these past two generations I've played that plays like classic shooters. Simple spawns, one team spawns on one side, one team spawns on the other. You have to fight your way through the map like a man. There's no kill streaks besides little stupid medal awards. You pick up, you know, your team's advantages and stuff on the ground, whether it's, you know, air support you want, um, a hero perk, gun perks, all that stuff. You pick it up off the fucking ground like you used to in the days of Half Life, Sin, Unreal Tournament, Quake, stuff like that. You know, when the real shooters were dominant, when first person shooters actually took skill. And I'm not saying they don't take skill now, because, you know, things like Call of Duty where, you know, you gotta get... ...kill a certain amount of people in a row to, you know, dominate the other team. It does take skill. But... My, it doesn't take as much skill. Yeah, my question is, where the fuck is the teamwork? Where, you know, where does the team play and the objective play come in? One person just, you know, gets to shine shine the light because you know oh I get five kills in a row so now I get a I get a um a super bomb or something to drop from the sky that's going to give me another five or ten kills in a row and so forth and so forth if one person you know gets lucky and kills three or four or five people he can just keep stacking up and stacking up and that's applauded that's you know what makes First person shooters player first person shooter players and everyone pro now. I mean, me personally, I wanna know, you know, what happened to the days where you know you had to you were in a team deathmatch that went, you know, to five hundred or a thousand points on a land connection and you know you had to fight your way out of the spawn point like a man because the game's gonna keep spawning you in the same spot over and over until you learn to strategize and get you and your team the fuck out of there. I want to know what happened to the days like that. I want to know what happened... why, you know, taking cover... behind something is considered being a camper. I want to know... why... that really bugs me. Yeah, like... it's... Okay, camping and defending a point or a certain objective are two totally different things. Thank you. You know, if if it's if we're playing team deathmatch, there should be no camping. It should be running around, working as a team, and getting kills. Yeah. Now, 
something like domination, search and destroy, those type of objective based games, once you capture something, the objective of the game is to hold it, not play fucking tug of war back and forth to see how many times both teams can capture me and, and most of the match. Right. It's, uh, get this position and hold this shit down as long as we can. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't understand the logic of, of first person shooters anymore. Like this and, and Rainbow Six Siege are the first really good first person shooters I've played in a long time. Um, even if it comes down to it, Destiny isn't a bad shooter. It's not... It's not crazy heavy on the kill streaks. There's um there's map advantages up and around everywhere for you to um for you to adapt to punish your enemy with like sentry turrets, um vehicles, stuff like that. Even you know just like battlefield. Yep. Same thing. But I just don't see, you know, where everyone got this mentality that everything just needs to, you know, be handed to them in a shooter. And the thing is, it's it's okay, and the more they go on these forums and cry about it, the more it fucking happens. Like, um, ex Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare are the best examples. How many times has those ga have those games been patched? nerfed, guns buffed up and down and stuff like that because, you know, people cry yep. <laughs> about certain weapons and certain perks and this and that and this, and this. I don't know. it's just oh wow, like um like, let me let me see somebody, you know bitch to Bethesda, you know, when um when uh, a, a gun in Doom was, you know, quote unquote OP or under power for some. Let's see if you know they send out some, you know, some some giant patch. I'm thinking, I think their answer would be, you know, get good or shut the fuck up and adapt. Which is honestly what I think the response that these developers need to start giving people more often because the the FPS genre is really just turning into a a bunch of girls. And it, 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 oh my god, it just, it makes me sick. And like, um, a friend of mine, Artful Vengeance, you know, I've been coming at him for a long time because, uh, he would never jump on any new shooters. He would always, he would always tell me, you know, that the, the, the excuses I'm sure, you know, a lot of people, if you hear like all over YouTube and stuff, um, games like, you know, Call of Duty, they're the same every year, um, shooters aren't the way they, they used to be and stuff like that. And I did not get it. I didn't realize what he was saying until I um I played Battlefront and I remembered how shooters used to be before this day and age. Now games like Call of Duty 4 and all those previous Call of Duties, they did it right. They weren't, you know, heavy so heavy on the kill streak emphasis and stuff like that. It was still um Yeah. The guns weren't all, you know, the same weapon, you know, just with a different skin. Some guns were stronger and weaker than others, the way it's supposed to be. All guns had their advantages and, and disadvantages. But now, if you want a gun better, all you need to do is, um, get your name up on Twitter or YouTube and cry about it on forums for a few months. And next thing you know, they'll kick your gun up two or three damage points. I don't know, I just, I don't understand the the logic at all and where where any of this is any of this is going. And then, then you know, we have a, another Call of Duty Infinity War is going to be bringing back you know, this year. I'm wondering what's going to happen this time around. Are they going? Is Infinity Ward going to be doing the same thing? Or are they going to be, you know, buffing and nerfing guns left and right? Because people bitch about them all day. 
Because I will say that's one thing I really haven't seen them do too much is, you know, adding a thousand patches just for gun tweaks. Yeah. Like, and the thing is, like, in a lot of these shooters, especially Call of Duty, it can take between five and seven shots to kill somebody. And people are okay with that. They like running around being a bullet sponge. Yeah, it's just... It all started. Before you know it, and, 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 and it's, I hate to say it, but long before you know it, 99.9% .9 of these shooters are going to be exactly like that. You're going to have this this basic template of a Call of Duty type game where you bullet sponge and shoot, you know, 10 to 15 bullets in order to get a kill. And then you're going to have all these fake wannabe realistic guns with all these modifications and weapon variants and all that type of mess and it's just going to carry over and it's just going to keep spreading yeah honestly another another example of a really good shooter and um people are going to disagree but just hear me out real quick is um is halo and that's one reason a decent amount of people don't like halo now because halo I'm not going to say it hasn't changed, but the formula to it hasn't changed. Halo was one of those, you know, original decent shooters when it first came out on the original Xbox. No kill streaks, different guns, you know, you basically, you know, had to get good or go home. Halo has stuck to that same formula, just expanded it. There were vehicles everywhere, map advantages, you know, depending on, you know, how you dominated the map and how you dominated the game is, you know, depending on whether you win win or lose. If, you know, you can fight your way to those vehicles, turrets, you know, the objectives and stuff like that, you can win the game. If you can't, you're you're screwed. Now, they, they play with, you know, they play with their spawn points a little bit, you know, to keep people shut the hell up. Which, you know, I can, I can respect, you know, because having fair spawns isn't so much of a bad thing. I personally think, you know, games need to be like this, where, you know, one team spawns on one side, one team spawns on the other, and they just call it a freaking day. But that's just my personal opinion. If you get spawn trapped, you be a man and, you know, you fight your fucking way out of that shit. That's what, you know, we used to have to do in Quake, um, GoldenEye, Nightfire. Time splitters one, two, and three. Halo one, Halo two. But now you know you can go on Reddit, you can go on Call of Duty dot com, file a complaint. Spawns and the whole game will be tweaked to however you. I ah, just oh man. Like you have this kind of this kind of shit going down with with first person shooters. And the only thing people can think to cry about, which I'm, you know, I'm not saying it's an invalid case or anything, is DLC. You have people, you have people bitching, you know, on forums, getting games changed up every five minutes. People don't have nothing better to do but cry about map packs. I just, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand it, but, um... So, did you have any um any additional comments you want to make before I wrap this up? Um, it really, it, it's it's not just first person shooters. It's it's sort of the gaming industry as a whole right. starting to, to go down. It's mainly first person shooters that have the biggest effect, uh, and it and it starts with the people. You know, the, these game corporations, the developers studios they come out and say yo you know I, I can almost guarantee my entire life on it this coming E3 they're probably going to announce another Call of Duty and it'll yeah. be out by the end of the year which is less than six months and what they're going to do is they're going to get a flood of pre-orders in make a shit ton of money and they're going to release a non-made game 
that's what they do they're giving basically when you buy a game on midnight launch you're basically buying a beta and then from that point on once everybody starts whining and complaining that's when they start nitpicking and putting the pieces of the puzzles together and then after your first DLC and your second DLC now you're starting to actually get what you should have paid for in the beginning and it's just the more the less we pre-order the more it will take them to actually build a perfect more well-functioning looking game I can agree with that because I don't know what it is about people pre-ordering but it just gives some type of bonuses not only to not only to the game companies but to game stores too like GameStop they're obsessed with getting with pre-orders with, with fucking pre-orders like um I have a local yeah I have a local game store you know near me the guy you know he gives people the option to pre-order but you know he's not crazy you know jumping down their throats about pre-ordering you know he's just Buying, selling, trading, and, and hustling the games. You know, he's you know, come game at your own fucking leisure. But GameStop, every time I walk in there, somebody's you know, trying to you know, suck my lower. yeah, suck my dick off to get me a get me a pre-order something. That's numbers. It's a number game. And the thing is, with these with these games, guys that are coming out, these pre-order bonuses. Don't break your fucking neck to get a pre-order bonus because in about four to five months after the game comes out, the shit's gonna be free and available to everybody anyway. Yep. Like I'm pretty sure like, Nuketown's like, in the PlayStation like Store right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like, stop breaking your necks to get pre-order bonuses and, and all this other stuff. You know, and it's not every developer that does it. Like I said, mainly first-person shooters. And, and I hate to say it, Call of Duty is the biggest one. When the game comes out, it's fucking buggy, it's laggy, the servers are absolute shit, shit's happening that shouldn't be happening, and it shouldn't be that way. And then it takes them two weeks after the game releases to build a patch to come out with it. Yep. should have been fixed in the first place. And sometimes after that damn patch and a few patches later, it still doesn't fucking work. Like um, yeah, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give one last one last comment to set a perfect example. You know who does DLC perfect or is is doing it at this current state? Ubisoft, with Rainbow Six Siege. All the all the map packs, all the addition the real additional content that's being added to the game, they're free in a seasonal cycle. The only thing the season pass gives you is an optional right there access instead of you know grinding your way through earning the um the operators and a shit ton of extra glamour yep. that's it and, and you do and you do get to use the operators uh, a week early yeah seven days early but seven yeah. days honestly I'm, it's really seven days is nothing I yeah. mean it's a week you get to play with an extra operator it's not like he comes with Superman powers and shit. Yeah, he can die the same exact way as everybody else does. Yeah, it's, it's not a not it's not a pay to win thing. There's you know no no god hack operator or nothing like that. That's who's doing DLC right, and that's what these game companies need to take need to take after and look at as an example. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this uh this commentary up, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed um. Please feel free to leave comments below. Um, don't forget to check out Soul's channel at youtube.com slash ICG Soul. Um, check out my channel. Check out my boy Knight Edric's channel. Um, special shout out to him and Obvious Stupidity. And um, we will see you guys later. Peace, guys. Later.